Hey guys, Shin Mao here. Today is another rough subject, Buddhist-Muslim relations and their history. I should preface with, I do not hate Muslims, however, I find any attempts to whitewash history by either side of the Buddhist-Muslim conflicts deplorable. In this video, I will attempt to tell you, like it is, without a filter or censorship of my words. I feel it is necessary to say it like this, for the sake of healing for my brothers who have lost their lives, and for the people responsible, for their souls to be healed. And with this video, I hope to explain the truth, and knowing the truth, both sides can have history never repeat itself again. Buddhism and Islam have over a thousand years difference in age between them, with Buddhism originating in the 6th century BCE in northern India and Nepal, and Islam originating in the Arabian Peninsula in the early 7th century Common Era. With such wide cultural, theological, and chronological stretches between them, there is no wonder that they have significant differences. Buddhism, at the time of Islam's genesis, stretched as far west as modern-day Kazakhstan and Afghanistan, and as far east as Japan, and as far southeast as Burma. However, in the mid-7th century, this changed very fast. The Rashidun Caliphate captured as far east as western Pakistan and into Central Asia. Anytime they found a Buddhist temple, they burned, ransacked, and killed everyone who did not accept Islam. By the 8th century, Islam had taken over the modern-day area covering northern Pakistan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, and Afghanistan. Later, the inclusions resumed under Turks and Muslim Mongols starting in the 11th century. Mahmud of Ghazni blazed into Pakistan, treating Buddhists and Hindus in much the same way as his 7th and 8th century raiders, burning temples, killing monks, and people who refused to convert. And similar to his predecessor, Ghazni failed to finish his life's work, and he was stopped short in Punjab in 1030, dying of a sudden illness. Around 130 years later, Muiz al-Din took over and invaded all the way to Delhi, creating a sultanate that, in its first dynasty, the Mamluks, destroyed all of the major Buddhist centers of northern India, as far as present-day Bangladesh. Among these were the sacred university of Nalanda. As a result, Buddhism declined, while Hinduism persevered in the face of Islamic rule. I should stop here and explain why the Islamic conquerors acted this way. I see three primary causes. Buddhism and Hinduism are not of the book, so they do not get the same protection as Christians and Jews. For Buddhists and Hindus, it's not required in a strict sense an interpretation of the Quran, which I have read. Both Buddhism and Hinduism, in contrast to Islam, make very heavy use of icons, which the Muslim invaders probably saw as idolatry, and enforcing the iconoclastic policies of the Quran and the Sunnah Hadiths, desecrated the temples to both discourage worship and to weaken the morale of the opposition. Some Islamic schools, such as the Salafis and Wahhabis, believe that Islam's religion of peace only applies when everyone in a society is Muslim. I'm making a leap in logic here, but it's entirely possible this mindset was present in the invaders. How do I feel about it as a Vajrayana practitioner? Well, invaders can burn our temples, murder our monks, rape our women, and hold us at sword point, but it doesn't invalidate our practice, except in their own personal heads. Buddhists have a right to defend their lives, homes, families, and religious leaders, which they have done for centuries against all invaders, not just Muslims. These conflicts continue today in three places. Sri Lanka, where the Islamic Tamil population has carried out terrorist attacks against the Sinhalese Buddhists. In Xinjiang, autonomous region in China, where the Uyghurs have rioted and tried to behead the mostly Buddhist and Taoist Han Chinese, often with the result of the Chinese government using deadly force and taking away their rights further. 
which isn't right. It isn't, full stop, but neither is committing terrorist acts. When you give in to terrorist demands, all you're saying is, violence is okay. Violence is the answer. And finally, in Myanmar, where the Rohingya, a native Bengali population in the northern Arakan state, near the border with Bangladesh, often conflict with the dominant Burmese and Mon groups, bombing temples, raping women, killing monks, and infamously spawning the 969 Ashen Weirathu's organization, called by Time magazine as the Burmese Bin Laden. Let me get this straight. I don't support 969. I should have put that out there. But I don't condone terrorism, the funding the Rohingyas receive from the Taliban to do so, or any of the other instigators in modern conflicts. So, how can we fix these issues? The problem requires a complex, multifaceted solution. For one, a reform of Islamic policy towards non-Abrahamic religions and an international effort to suppress the obsolete Islamic belief that every religion not mentioned in the Quran should be destroyed. On the flip side, there needs to be necessary negotiations to find a solution that benefits the Muslim Tamils, the Uyghur, and the Rohingya, that fixes the problem's root, causes without giving in to terrorist demands. And above all else, there needs to be a better respect coming from both sides, from both Muslims and Buddhists, a willingness to stop fighting and come to a solution for all parties involved. If we can't get Muslims to tolerate Buddhism's cultural heritage and right to exist, then Buddhism will feel compelled to destroy Islam or risk annihilation at their hands. Likewise, if we can't as Buddhists come together and figure out a solution that would solve the issue, they're going to continue fighting against us, no matter what we do. And that's all I really have to say on the issue. If you disagree, start a discussion in the comments and I'll see if we can come to a common ground. If you liked the video, hit like and subscribe for more videos. And if you're feeling generous, please share the video.